The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. For a many-turn coil, the surface used to define the flux linkage is often geometrically complex. Faraday's law equates the circulation of electric field around a closed contour C to the negative of the time rate of magnetic flux passing through any surface S bounded by the contour. Any shaped surface can be used just as long as it is bounded by the contour C. A many-turn coil having terminals at A and B links flux through the surface enclosed by a contour composed of C1 adjacent to the perfectly conducting wire and C2 completing the circuit between the terminals. The direction of positive flux is that of area element DA defined with respect to differential length element ds by the right-hand rule. If the terminal voltage is to be a uniquely defined quantity, independent of the layout of the connecting wires, the terminals at A and B of the coil must be in a region where the magnetic induction is negligible compared to that within the coil interior. To visualize this complex surface enclosed by the contour C1 plus C2, we use yarn strung on a frame representing the contour. For this three-turn coil, the surface is filled in by stringing yarn between a vertical rod joining the terminals in the external region to points on the wire. The surface is filled in by connecting points on the rod to points of increasing distance along the wire. In evaluating Faraday's law, the contour goes from the terminal at A to that of B along the coil wire and closes through a path outside the coil. However, the electric field E is zero along the perfectly conducting wire. Hence, the entire contribution to the line integral comes from the path between the terminals from B to A. Thus, the circulation of electric field E around the closed contour is just the negative of the terminal voltage of terminal A with respect to B. Faraday's law then requires that this negative of the terminal voltage just equal the negative of the time rate of magnetic flux lambda through the surface. The surface S spans the entire closed contour. The surface S has as its edge the perfectly conducting coil along C1 and the contour C2 used to close the circuit in the region of the terminals. The surface S includes the sum of areas enclosed by each individual turn. If the magnetic induction is negligible in the region of C2, the electric field is irrotational in the vicinity of the terminals. Then the specific contour C2 is arbitrary, and the electromotive force between the terminals becomes the voltage used in circuit theory. A circuit application of Faraday's law is an inductor. When the flux link by a perfectly conducting coil is due entirely to the current I in the coil itself, the magnetic flux lambda is proportional to I. The ratio of flux to current is the self-inductance L. The dependence of the inductance L on the number of turns in surface S is a way of demonstrating how the terminal voltage depends on the time rate of change of the total flux linked by all coil turns. The inductance is only a function of geometric variables like coil size, number of turns, and for linear magnetic materials, the magnetic permeability of the region inside and outside the coil. We have wound a few inductors of different lengths and number of turns on a wooden rod using copper wire covered with enamel insulation. The enamel insulation prevents electrical contact between turns, so the current path must follow the wire. The insulation prevents short-circuiting between turns. We will measure the coil inductances using this meter. Because the coil length D is much larger than the coil diameter, the magnetic field within the coil carrying current I is approximately uniform over the coil cross-section. 
The tightly wound n turned coil approximates a surface current with current per unit length of ni over d. Because the magnetic field outside a long coil is negligible, the discontinuity in tangential h is just the interior magnetic field. This field must then equal the surface current. Because the field is uniform over the circular cylindrical cross section, the magnetic flux phi sub lambda passing through one turn is simply the cross sectional area multiplied by the flux density mu naught h. The total flux linkage of the entire coil is obtained by summing the contributions of all the turns. In this simple case, all turns link the same flux phi sub lambda, so the total flux lambda is n times the flux linked by each turn. Since the flux per turn is already proportional to n, the self-inductance is proportional to the square of the number of turns. We have twisted the terminal ends of this coil to reduce the stray inductance. It is wound on the non-magnetic rod, which has a radius of 5 millimeters. This coil has 50 turns and is 5.05 centimeters long. The coil inductance is predicted to be 4.9 microhenries. The inductance meter measures the coil inductance at 1 kilohertz. This frequency is high enough that the coil inductive reactance greatly exceeds the small coil of resistance, which we have neglected in our analysis. We measure 5.9 microhenries. This inductance has contributions from the coil and connecting wires. We short circuit the terminals and measure 0.7 microhenries as the lead inductance. Subtracting this from the measured 5.9 microhenries gives the coil inductance as 5.2 microhenries in reasonable agreement with the predicted 4.9 microhenries. We now measure the inductance of the coil with double the number of turns, but also double the length. Doubling the number of turns n, but also doubling the coil length d, should result in double the inductance. The inductance meter now reads 11.2 microhenries. Subtracting the 0.7 microhenry lead inductance gives corrected coil inductance of 10.5 microhenries, about double the inductance of the first coil of 5.2 microhenries, as it should be. We now measure the inductance of the coil, which is the same length as the second coil, but has two layers of windings and thus double the number of turns. We measure 44.4 microhenries, for which the corrected coil inductance is 43.7 microhenries. We have doubled the number of turns without changing the coil length. The coil area of the two-layer coil is hardly changed because the wire diameter is much smaller than the wood diameter used as a core form. The inductance should increase by four. This coil inductance is about four times our previous corrected measurement of 10.5 microhenries with half the number of turns. The surface for a many-turned coil used in Faraday's law is geometrically complex, as the bounding contour to the surface follows the path of the wire. For a tightly wound coil, the magnetic flux linking this surface is the sum of fluxes linking each turn. Since the magnetic flux per turn is proportional to the number of turns, if each turn links the same flux, the total flux linked by the coil is n times the flux per turn. The coil self-inductance is then proportional to the square of the number of turns.